The German Third Reich, also known as Nazi Germany, is a period of German history well known by everyone in the whole world. But there is a part of the Third Reich history deep buried in the shadows of time and oblivion. By that time, different gangs and organized crime were having their golden age in the USA. Names like Al Capone, Lucky Luciano, and Bugsy Siegel made the cover of newspapers and magazines by that time. The 30s and 40s were sweet years for organized crime and gangs in the USA. But what about Nazi Germany? Was there any sort of organized crime and gangs acting under the hood and moving parallel to the shadows of the German Third Reich? The idea of a superior race proclaimed by the Nazis was incompatible with the proliferation of criminal gangs and even with more organized ways of criminal activities. According to some historians, Hitler once said, there was no word in German for gangster. Germany has never been a favorable ground for organized crime in general terms. One of the main causes of the low power action of gangs and organized crime in the Third Reich was the police system they adopt. One of the benefits of the strong police system established by the Third Reich was the strict control of the population and the activities they were developing on a daily basis. The system allowed to know what people were doing or even what they were going to do at some point in the future. The strict controls over the population, together with a zero tolerance to criminal activities in local territory, brought as a consequence that criminal activities and gangs were as difficult to organize as resistance. Also, the Nazi state increased staff and training and modernized police equipment. Police manpower was even extended by the incorporation of Nazi paramilitary organizations as auxiliary policemen giving as a result that crime did indeed go down and the operation of criminal gangs almost ended. The police direction was also centralized. Heinrich Himmler, head of the SS, also became the chief of all German police forces. Back in the Weimar Republic, the police system was hard to understand, disorganized at some points, and lacked modern equipment that would allow it to better carry out its daily tasks the Nazi state in fact alleviated many of the frustrations the police experienced in the Weimar Republic. According to the Statistical Handbook of Germany, the crime rate between 1928 and 1944 under the Nazis went down. Only in 1944 and in 1945 did crime begin to be a problem, mainly because of bombing damages and disruptions of the normal way of life of Germans. The local police noted particularly an increase in thieves in camps and work employing foreign workers and reacted by numerous executions on the last year of the Third Reich. Some could think that criminal organizations did not have it easy when it came to positioning themselves within a centralized Germany. But there is one case of an organization that resisted the Nazi attacks, Ringverein. Ringverein were criminal gangs operating in late 19th and early 20th century Germany, notably the Weimar period. Individual associations formed umbrella organizations depending on each other, so-called rings, from which the term Ringverein is derived. Also, their members identified themselves by using a special ring. This group was formed in the 1890s as the Organization for the Mutual Help for Released Prisoners, whose public mission was to provide mutual aid and cultural activities for their members. But very soon, they became criminal organizations and networks. Their main center was Berlin. However, at the zenith of his power, they had several small networks spread around other important cities in Germany. According to some historians, the Ringverein, like the Mafia, honored a strict criminal code. They never used violence against civilians, only against fellow gangsters. To keep the public opinion favorable, they presented themselves as Robin Hood-type outlaws. They always made sure to give a portion of their gains to poor mothers and children. Only men were allowed to join and candidates for membership had to be between 21 and 24 years old involved in the following types of crimes. Prostitution, extortion, illegal gambling, drug trafficking, receiving stolen goods, illegal labor brokerage, burglary, armed smuggling, or currency counterfeiting. Convicted murderers and sex offenders could not be members. Ringverein contacts with Nazis started from the very first moment Nazis tried to block their business. As some important club members realized that the Nazis were not going to patronize their activities, one part of the Ringverein joined forces with communists, while the other part kept fighting both Nazis and communists. The Ringverein was declared illegal in 1934, 
but continued acting under the shadows of the Third Reich despite several members being sent to concentration camps without trial. One of the most famous Ringverein gangsters were the Saz brothers. Franz and Erich Saz were two Berlin burglars who gained great fame during the Weimar Republic. In 1926, the brothers decided to turn to the criminal opening of safes. To do this, they used the most modern methods, which are now considered to be prototypical for their trade, but were a novelty at the time, opening bank vaults with cutting torches. Until 1932, nothing could be proven against them in court. When the National Socialists came to power in January 1933, the Saas brothers found it wiser to emigrate to Denmark. The Copenhagen police recorded soon after a series of break-ins and cracked vaults. In 1934, detective assistant Christian Biering, known as Christian the Irritable, found evidence of burglaries and hidden foreign exchange during a search of their hotel room. For this, they were sentenced to four years in prison in Denmark, which they had to serve until 1938. After their release from prison, Franz and Erre were immediately extradited to Germany. After two years of pretrial detention, they were convicted of aggravated theft and foreign currency offenses committed jointly. Franz Zoss became 13, Eric Zoss to 11 years in prison convicted. Despite severe torture, neither of them have disclosed the hiding place of the discount bank robbery. On March 27, 1940, they were transferred to Sachsenhausen concentration camp and killed. The next day, the Nazi press reported that they had been shot in the face of resistance. Interestingly, the treasure from the Sass brothers' last Berlin robbery was never found. Criminal police investigators claimed that during the post-robbery investigation, they had seen Erich in the Grunewald forest with a shovel, not far from the cemetery. Some still seek the treasure there, even today. Nevertheless, despite being banned and the best efforts of the Nazi regime, these organized gangs persisted. They continued their criminal activities in the first years of the German Democratic Republic, but with support from the Soviet Union, the Ringverein were suppressed. 